Lady Hussey, the so-called racist lady-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth, who was booted out of the palace for asking a woman where she was from. Remember that horrendous crime? I mean, remember now, the woman who she asked what her heritage was, was dressed in African garb with an African hairstyle, with an African name that she had adopted. Her real name was Marlene Headley. Well, that was Lady Hussey. Well, she's apparently back in the Royals' good books again after they threw her under the bus during that media storm, with even the Prince of Wales saying that racism has no place in our society, essentially calling his own godmother a racist. Here to discuss this and more is Esther Kraku, writer and broadcaster in London. Esther, Lady Hussey is, uh, is back. Uh, are we getting an apology to her? I mean, her entire character was defamed horrendously. Yes, I mean, the, the whole debacle with Lady Hussey is probably the most embarrassing uh, story to ever come out of the UK in, in, in my lifetime, because the, the, the sycophantic way within uh, with which the British media kind of picked up the story and, and you know, all the reports from Ngozi Fulani and treated it as it was fact, and the fact that, you know, her own godson effectively turned on her and jettisoned her from the royal family, it was, it was completely shocking. I can't believe, you know, this is how we treat a woman in her 80s who was genuinely curious. I mean, when the re revelation came out that Lady Hussey is actually part of a church where the, the congregation is a significant part of the um, proportion yes. of the congregation are actually West African, so Nigerian and Ghanaian. You know, that's when people, it, it, you know, it started to sink in. But I, I really, I mean, at the time that this controversy came up, I had to make the point that Ngozi Fulani is not a real name. Fulani is a tribe. Ngozi is an Igbo name uh, from Nigeria. People in West Africa, we don't tend to pair first names with tribes. It's, 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 it's a nonsense. And mm. also, I, I pointed out that she wasn't actually wearing any sort of it was more of a costume than anything there was no actual cultural relevance to what she was wearing she was wearing a leopard print outfit i mean it's something you could really pick up at tk maxx um so th there was just there was it was a completely ridiculous situation and i felt so embarrassed with the way lady hussey was treated i thought the way the royal family handled it was just an even bigger embarrassment and it just shows how neutered and terrified people are of the r word even when there's really no basis for it well, those revelations you mentioned about her church, I think really give some weight to to why she kept asking where this woman was from because she's genuinely interested in her heritage. She wanted to know what part of Africa her ancestry is from and to interpret that interest as racist and, and bigoted and hostile is just so dishonest. It really is. Now, we've got to talk about Prince Harry. We can't avoid it. It's been uh, alleged that the uh, whining, lying, entitled Duke of Monacito will be invited to his father's coronation. That's the latest reporting we're hearing. But Esther... I don't think this is a very good idea. I think King Charles is going to be making a massive mistake because this is just going to be more material for Harry and Meghan, more content for books two, three and four because he has signed a four-book deal. I mean, the, I, I understand the strategy from um, from the King Charles being that if he doesn't invite the, the Sussexes, um, which most people would prefer, uh, that in and of itself is a sort of a media fury on its own. So I understand taking the high road, even though they've been utterly betray been betrayed by the Sussexes, it makes sense to invite them. I think the bigger concern is why would they want to go? I mean, really, what possible reason could Meghan and Harry have to want to go to the coronation for an institution they're clearly not very fond of, for an institution they've done very great damage to, and, you know, in a country that they really don't enjoy being in? I mean, it's clear that Meghan didn't particularly enjoy her time here, and and Harry's effectively exiled himself to 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 the U.S. So it would it really begs the question why they should even come. I think from from the British public's perspective, we understand why he's extending that olive branch because that's the classy thing to do, and you know part of his role as as the king is also setting an example um, to the public on how these things are done. Everyone has family, everyone has you know family troubles, everyone has that problematic family member, um, but it's how you handle it uh, that really speaks volumes of your character.